I'm Steve Hare, and joining me right now uh, for our interview is Robert Hunter. He's an East Wenatchee attorney. He's seeking election to the district court bench for Douglas County, uh, the seat that's being vacated, of course, with the retirement of Judith McCauley. And uh, Mr. Hunter, thanks for joining us here on NCW Life. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me here. This is a good opportunity for you to introduce yourself to our viewers and uh, tell us about who you are and why you're seeking this, uh, this seat. Oh, sure, I welcome the opportunity. Uh, it's a public job, I have to remember that. And uh, this office that I'm, we're in now is from my private practice. So I've always been in private practice. However, I've served a lot in the public arena, uh, but this time I would actually get paid for it. Uh, a lot of times I'm just helping out and uh, you know, you get a nice pat on the back and you feel good about doing what you did. And that started a long time ago back in Detroit where I grew up and uh, HUD came along and they mowed down my neighborhood. Housing and urban development. Housing and urban development, yes. that's right. And the Office of Economic Opportunity gave me a job. And you know, we're in the depressed area and uh, it was all of a sudden I, I'm in this heavily populated area and now it's like I'm in the country except for the chain link fences that are still standing. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it took a while for new homes to be put back up, new modest homes. And uh, I would say, gosh, I, you know, the weeds are growing and the garbage is still hanging around. And so I would just go, I, you know what, I'm kind of sick of this. I, I would go out there and get myself a weed whacker and I'd just try and knock some weeds down and then uh, pick up some trash because it just felt yeah. horrible. I mean. It was still an improvement over what the houses were that were before. I, my, I was raised by an elderly foster couple. They took me in when I was five. Mm -hmm. And um, they gave me a strong work ethic. They came from the South. And uh, they were very big on me getting an education and said, you know, this, why don't you go clean that lot? Because I had so much energy. It's kind of like you're a kid. You're kind of like, sure. oh, it's 14. I'm 14 years old. Get him out of the house. Go do something else. So then that seemed to be okay. Was, they were saying, Bobby, way to go. And uh, then I saw an old fence, got some old paint. Someone gave me some paint. Started, you know, it's like, uh, it's like an old story or something. It's like somebody else says, I'll help you with that. So they, someone starts painting the fence with me. And uh, then I got some of my friends from my church to go help an elderly gal who had an old cinder block home. They didn't tear that one down. But it needed a facelift, and I said, why don't we paint her house? I mean, she really needs a hand. Then the newspapers came, and I was like, okay, um, I feel like I could do something. And along the course of my life, I've helped here and there. I'm ha Habitat for Humanity or what have you. And I was uh, with, uh, when in law school, I was the uh, American Bar Association student liaison with the uh, Affordable Housing Forum. So it was kind of in my DNA in a sense. Public service. Public service. And when I see this position, I've been vying for that position with Judith. She's been hanging on there for a long time. And I'm like, doggone it, it's only two blocks away. I'm like, oh, that'd be a great spot. But more than that, I also, uh, you know, I'm on the planning commission now for East Wenatchee. And I just really want to help the community. Let me ask you this. I mean, uh, Detroit's a long way from Wenatchee. Let's uh, talk about why, what brought you to Washington State. Well, um, that is another long story. I don't think we got enough time for that. Uh, I've lived a full life. Uh, after my foster parents passed away, my mom passed away when I was about 14. And uh, then Dallas, he, my fa foster father, and they were just surrogate parents. They didn't really have a formal, sure. they just grabbed me and, hey, got to help this guy. But um, uh, he died when I was a junior in college. And uh, so after, it was kind of a shame because they're the ones who wanted to see me get the education. Right. Uh, but I struck out as a young guy would go to LA, worked down there, got, went into the paralegal program at UCLA, which was, and still is a nationally acclaimed paralegal program. And uh, came, I was paralegal down there for years, came up here, got a job in Seattle, worked for Bogle & Gates, which is no longer but a huge firm, uh, like number two behind Perkins Coy. Then um, the attorney's like, why don't you go to law school? Well, 
my ego is big enough, so I thought I'd go do that. Um, and to my own surprise, I got in a top-tier law school, University of Minnesota, and I'm about 34 at this point, so I'm a little late in the, in the get-go on this, uh, but still uh, went, packed up the family at the time and uh, went to Minneapolis. It was rated 16th. I also got accepted to UCLA um, Law School, but th Minnesota offered me a great scholarship and pretty much paid for everything. Um, can't pass that up in spite of all the mosquitoes in Minnesota. And uh, so it was, then I'm going, and everybody was flocking out to go to Chicago or St. Louis or wherever. Uh, I have friends in D.C. or New York, and I'm like, I'm not going to do that again. I'm tired of the big city. Um, I know when I was working in Seattle, they were saying, why don't you go to the other side of the mountain? If I could, I would. I mean, when I retire, that's where I'm going. Mm -hmm. So I did, and Aga Murphy Wallace gave me a an opportunity and I was starting doing prosecution for East Wenatchee as a deputy prosecutor and uh, that's why I'm here it just uh, it was it seemed like a normal uh, transgression but it it I know it seems like I'm jumped around but here I am and for 20 years I've been here so you see this is a natural progression of your your, your legal career then it is move I mean, on the bench yeah absolutely um, why district court well, first off, um, it is, it is, uh, it, there's a need there. Um, because we had two right. open seats on our Chelan County uh, Superior Court as well. Well, you know, of course, uh, Douglas County resident, I can well, only go true. in that's Douglas true. County. That's true, I beg your pardon. Yeah. And so, uh, but, you know, John Hotchkiss does a wonderful job up in Superior Court, and uh I, you know, he's doing so great there that I wouldn't even bother him except he is very busy. It takes over two years to get to like a trial. I, last time I tried to get a summary judgment motion up there, Joe, um, his uh, uh, administrator was able to give us one for like six months away. Over here in East Wenatchee, you can get to trial in six months. So I'm going, why is that? Well, and I don't want to, you know, I'm not, I'm not into disparaging people. I just want to say what I can do. And I think I have a well-rounded, diverse background in not just criminal law, but also in torts and uh, contracts. And I think I've developed a pretty good practice of my own in serving the pub, you know, my uh, private uh, clientele. But it was when you think about what needs to be done over there, um, you wonder why didn't folks go over there? Well, not a lot of folks would take their contract cases over there to someone who was the lifer prosecutor. And now I think Judith did, did a wonderful job. I mean, she's just, a, I think, a great person too. Um, but in any event, if you've got a complex commercial litigation case, for whatever reason, the glamor of Waterville uh, brought them up there. And I'm hoping that the other members of the bar will come to East Wenatchee to have their case heard for a lesser filing fee and in a shorter term. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's kind of my big goal. We, you know, I, I really like to see some of the civil matters go over there. Understand. So uh, what, uh, what is your temperament? We've all been kind of locked into this uh, congressional hearings in the past week uh, for, for Brett Kavanaugh in the Supreme Court. But uh, in, a, in a district court situation, uh, I think temperament is, is equally important this in is a true. judicial candidate. How would you describe yourself? Well, um, I have to count to 10 on occasion with my children. <laughs> Who does and, it? Yeah, so it's kind of the same way. When I was doing prosecution, I know Jeff Barker was the judge then, and, uh, you know, I just go, gosh, with the patience of a saint over there. And that's the job. You know, you really have to do, I mean, folks, if you did the deed, you got to pay the fine. Right. End of story. There's no need to slap them a couple of times from the bench. Uh, you don't have to get heated. Uh, there's not a lot of discretion on infractions and misdemeanors. The legislature's already told us what to do, so you just got to apply the law to the facts at hand and hopefully give some guidance, because one of the things I noticed over in prosecution was that 
some of these folks are just one step away from making the wrong decision again. Mm -hmm. And if you just guide them, maybe community service, I don't know how realistic that is, but that would certainly be a one, I really would love to see. I remember when I was younger, it took someone with the HUD program directing me in the right direction. And I think that there's a lot of young folks here, even not so young, just here, why don't you try this? There's a lot of opportunities here. So you've walked that mile in somebody else's shoes. You know? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, of course, you have an opponent in the upcoming election. How yeah. do you distinguish between yourself and your opponent? And uh, how can voters make that decision? You can't talk about issues, I know, that might come before you on the bench. And that's always kind of a restriction that I, as a reporter, have to follow. So there's not a lot. Uh, except for experience and qualifications that a voter has to, uh, to, 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 to look at before voting for a judicial candidate. Well, Eric, you know, I, I, I've met him a few times now only because we've been campaigning, seem to be rubbing elbows as we get up and start doing the meet and greet and giving our uh, presentation to whoever's going to be attending. He seems to be a really nice guy. Uh, I don't know him professionally, so I can't really comment on that. Uh, he is a lifer prosecutor. I couldn't even opine at all. I've never uh, crossed paths with him professionally on dealing with contracts or real estate or all the things that I do as well. And uh, I really, I wouldn't even want to even go there. It's, you know, what if I win? I have to go in front of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, for myself, I get a parking ticket and I got to go yeah. before you. Let's you know? so, not burn any bridges. Got to keep this civil, you know. Yeah, we're so, buddies, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, your family life? Oh yeah, I have. Uh, I kicked a couple out already, and one's down in L.A., and my daughter's here in town, and has my grandson. My grandson is. 10 days older than my son, my four-year-old son. So they're, I have a grandson and a, a son that's four years old, and my daughter's six. And uh, my wonderful wife, Yulia, who is um, out there really campaigning. Uh, she knows how busy I am here, so she'll be handing out brochures, knocking on doors with my little girl, Vika. And uh, they're just really having a wonderful time. And we seem to have lost a summer, but at the same time, because of the campaign, we're meeting a lot of folks, great people. I'm, this is the first time we've met, yeah. and I've never had the opportunity really to go out and meet some of these wonderful folks, and this is, it's, a, it's, a new, it's a new part of my life. Obviously, you're uh, involved with uh, volunteer activities and uh, yes. Habitat for Humanity. Are you still, still I'm, working? I'm not. Um, I would love to be, you know, helping with that but the you know i was on the northwest baptist foundation i was on the investor committee there so you're active in your church oh and then the personnel committee at the eastmont baptist church and then i'm also on the pers on the uh like the planning commission there's only so much that a guy can do <laughs> yeah that's true well we're kind of pressed for time here uh robert hunter who's running for the douglas county district court bench i'll give you the last word why should people vote for Robert Hunter for judge? I have a very diverse background, and I have a very good education. I have wonderful clients who have, I'd like to say I've tempered them, and they've tempered me. And I'm here to uh, say that I've met a lot of folks, and I, I've kind of got a few gray hairs, not as many as Steve, but I have, with those gray hairs, have come a life of experience that have helped me to assess folks and I think judge them as well. Thank you. Very good. Again, Robert Hunter seeking election to the Douglas County District Court bench. I'm Steve Hare for NCW Life News.